today we are going to talk about the Renaissance, which is very exciting because it's one of my favorite periods of history. Because when you study the Renaissance, you realize that so much of what was going on in the Renaissance is still happening now. Or the ideas that came about in the Renaissance are also happening now. So it's perfect. Um, but the big question is, why did the Renaissance start in Italy? So our objective today is to figure that out. And we are going to understand why the Renaissance began in Italy by looking at its geography. That's why we have the big map. Uh, we're going to look at the history, we're going to look at politics, and we're going to look at economics. And by the end of the hour, in order for you to get out of class, you're going to have a ticket out the door answering questions about the roots of the Italian Renaissance. So what we're going to do, we're going to work in groups today because I'm going to be asking lots of questions and I want you to brainstorm in a group and then give me your idea. So I'm going to count to four, count off to four, and um, group one will be right here, group two right here, group three, and group four, one group is going to have, two groups are going to have two extra people, okay? I'll do that real quick. Okay, so when I say go, not quite yet, I want you to get your notebook and a pen, because even though you're in a group, you will each be responsible for, for taking the individual notes, and quietly pick your notebook up in your pencil and get into your group. This is going to take us 30 seconds. Go. This right here, that's Africa. This right here 
is the Middle East and the Holy Land, right? You've got Constantinople. And over here, you have Europe. So Italy is kind of smack right in the middle, which is sort of a good thing. So um, in your notes, then, you should definitely have ports, uh, water, location, because mountains are really great. Okay, so I'll give you a couple seconds just to write that down, and then we're going to go on to question number two. Okay, so question number two is, brainstorm in your group about what you know regarding the history, thank you, Olivia, of the Italian peninsula and why this history is so important. Remember, we're talking about the Renaissance here. Somebody give me a quick definition again of the Renaissance. I know you know what it is, but let's just keep it in our heads. Those are more serious in terms of from 1400 to 1600. Yeah. And it means rebirth. It means rebirth. Rebirth from what? From the, um, they're talking about the rebirth of the time of culture. And they know that the Roman, but I think she's Roman and Greek times. Okay, great. So, you know what the history is, but just brainstorm in your groups about what if you're living someplace where a thousand years before there was this grand empire, civilization as the world has not known. What would that, I don't know, what would that, how would that influence this renaissance? Think about it. Think about it in your groups for two minutes, okay? And then I want you to share your ideas. Okay, I need someone to talk about someone from this group. We haven't heard from you yet. Do you have a question? Okay, so let's let's hear about why the history of the Italian peninsula would inspire this rebirth. Maybe because well, the power of Italy in the Middle Ages was still kind of it was strong, mm -hmm. not as strong as all the other countries in Europe, and maybe during the Middle Ages they the Italy kind of kept its culture from before. And it brought it back. So people, like you said, they were living in cities a thousand years ago. People, do we know in the Middle Ages? What do we know about the Middle Ages? Were there big cities? Was it urban? Was it dense? No. So that's a big difference. Great point. Let's move on. This question is one of my favorites because it was on the quiz that I gave you all. Discuss the lasting impact of the Crusades on the Italian Peninsula. So think about that. It was the last question on the quiz. And that's why it was so important, because the Crusades, what happened in the Crusades fueled the birth of the Renaissance. There's a connection between those two. So spend two minutes talking about that connection. I mean, what do you trade besides the biggest thing that's a good thing? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. about individualism. So individuals, this idea that people believe that their lives were interesting is kind of was a new concept, um, not to just to themselves, but to others. Um, the focus was on the individual and the potential of human nature. Here's a quote from a writer, an architect, and a mathematician from the time. Men can do all things if they will. So I want you to talk about in your groups for just a second, how is this different than the values of individualism? And, um, and how did this shift come about? Somebody sort of mentioned it. I mean, all of a sudden now you've got people thinking that their what's important that their life is worthy and it's not just worthy to yourself but to others. Is that different than the Middle Ages? Yeah. Okay. Talk about why and what forces might have brought you to your group. 
Okay, really quickly, does somebody want to tell me about how is this different than feudalism, this idea of individualism? How is this different than what people were thinking during the Middle Ages? Well, since in the feudal society there were uh, like different ranks, mm -hmm. and then in the individualism, people just sort of created their own mm -hmm. ranks. Yeah. It didn't matter what the, how wealthy they were or how they lived. Or what you did. How good, of a, how good of a tradesman you were, or an artist. Okay, just because we're running out of time, I want to mention humanism. This is another idea that emerged. Um, the humanism was a, uh, people looked to the classics. To, it was a, a new idea about education. The humanities come from it. The humanities is when you study history and geography and Latin, or not Latin, literature and philosophy. It was this idea that to be a well-rounded citizen so that you could participate in society, you needed to know all these different subjects. And this came from classical ideas. Um, one of the most famous humanists was Petrarch, and this is what he, this is a quote that he's describing his friend who he thinks is a great humanist. He is very eloquent, possessed of great powers of persuasion, and ready of speech. As a writer, he is also charming and elegant. His diction, the way he talks, is very copious, is graceful and brilliant. I believe that he reads all the poets that are generally known. This is the idea of a humanist. Um, how is this different from the Middle Ages? Really quickly, you need to spend just spend ten seconds in here talk about it. So I guess he seems awesome. like he's a really educated person, and um, in the Middle Ages, I, I mean, like the, the rich people, the lords and ladies were educated, but not did they learn? to some extent. They learned about like religion and stuff, and all the serfs, they um, none of them knew how to write or anything. They um, were not educated at all. So it was this idea that everybody should have some knowledge of humanity. So we need to have citizens that are participating. Is this similar to what we, the how we feel today? This is why the Renaissance is so exciting to me, the Renaissance period, because these values emerge that, guess what? Aren't they sort of similar to what we have today? Yeah. This is why these ideas emerge. OK, the last one is. And it's tied to these other ones. This is um, secularism, S E C U L. You will definitely cut that out of the video. Okay, can somebody tell me real quickly what secularism is? Yeah. Yeah, so having to do with human rights, not right. holding 